Happy Wednesday, welcome, you welcome, guys, welcome. and welcome to Illustrate Radio. <laughs> I am T. Gray. That is lucky. Welcome, you guys, to Illustrate Radio. We have a fantastic show for you all tonight. Of course, you know we always got a dope guest, special surprises, plenty more to come. DJ yeah. Stiletto is going to come in and give us a dope yeah. mix. We're going to have a fun time tonight. First things first, though, we got to get the business out the way, you guys. You all make sure that you are following us anywhere, everywhere at Illustrate underscore radio show. Make sure that you're tuned into our YouTube. We are streaming live right now, you guys, from the Studio 202 DC page. Make sure you're checking us out on iHeart. Make sure you're downloading from your Roku app, your 7 on demand for Illustrate TV channel we are now illustrate tv show we're elevating you guys we're doing big things i am t gray that is lucky lucky what's up lucky how you doing oh no i did it wrong i'm doing good i'm doing good how are you it's women crush wednesdays and i'm so excited because i have been crushing really hard since i find out our special guest that we are having and i guess i want to wait till we're done with the our segment today so we're gonna get to that afterwards and we're gonna make sure we introduce her properly because i'm super stoked Okay, so for today, for just my luck, let's just get right into it. I was watching a Kevin Samuels video, um, really more of a reaction video, and there was a young lady on there referring to a smile. And she said that she doesn't like anyone telling her when to smile, how to smile, um, because she feels as though it's controlling, it's disrespectful, it's not really a welcoming gesture. And I thought to myself, how sad. How sad that a world that we live mm -hmm. in today, um, that that we we're dealing with so many different mental issues and so many different um, social issues and racial issues that it's hard for us to even smile. That a woman feels threatened by a man if a man approaches her and tell, asks her to smile. And oftentimes I give compliments to women as well, and they don't really receive them as well as you would like them to. And I don't really take it personal, but I understand that there is a lot of things that we've been through. Um, but however, Black women are winning. We are up in real estate um, ownership. We are up climbing the ladder. Um, within the corporate ladder. We are doing a lot of different things. We are entrepreneurs. We are mompreneurs. We are really doing a lot of things. And we have it actually, if you ask my opinion, kind of made. I feel like if you go back as early as my brother was telling me, as early as the 90s, is that we've been put in this position to kind of elevate one another. Um, and I just want to tell us that although things may be, we may feel as though they're going bad for us, it is okay to smile. And if you feel as though it's not okay to smile, then there needs to be some kind of mental, some therapy. And, and we, we love to say that therapy isn't accessible to Black people or Black women. And that is a lie. It is actually a free service that we do not take often enough. Um, there are a lot of companies now that offer outside services for therapy for um, mental health issues, or if you just need to talk with someone, um, there's a lot of help and it's free. It's a lot of help that is free out here. So take advantage of all the things and all the benefits that your jobs have to offer. Because if you think that it's not okay to smile, that someone asking you to smile is offensive, there is something wrong. And I, I, I want us to get it fixed. I want us to address these issues so that we can stop the man bashing and men can stop bashing us as well. Um, because there's a lot of that going around too. And Kevin Samuels is is very much a female in my eyes. Um, I was having this discussion with a mentor as well. So let me just, get, I don't want to get off topic, but again, it's okay to smile, get your mental health issues together, go meditate. If you feel as though talking to a doctor is not good enough for you, meditate, start eating better. I, I'm very big and keen on things that we put in our body. Um, is the energy that we give out. So if we're putting all of these negative things in our body that cause hypertension and diabetes and high blood pressure, then I wouldn't, I would totally understand why we're angry so much. Um, address some of the father issues that you may have. Talk with someone because a lot of us got parental issues as well. But Black women, we are put in a position to win. It's time for us to elevate ourselves, to appreciate, to take responsibility and accountability 
for the things that we've experienced and that are going through and how we can address to get them fixed. Um, just saying that, you know, I'm stressed. I go through this every day is not enough. So again, smile ladies. And that's all I have for just my luck. Well, all right. So you guys, so today's Woody, love and... So, oh, so I was going to try to introduce you this that was, way, but I'm just going to sip this drink. I'm just going to sip this drink. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay because I feel... Um, is if what you said kind of in some aspect does tie into what I'm going to talk about um, because there are a lot of different things that can affect your mental health. So today's love and is love and take a minute, nigga. Okay, so um, <laughs> normally I try my best not to mix my um, sex talk with Tigray or or my love below self with my illustrate self. But today these things have happened have to merge today you guys so when you allow sex to influence your decision making especially in a negative light you guys is not healthy is not healthy um and i know people probably saying well what do you mean t gray how does sex influence me as a negative light the reality of it is women out there we've all done some things for good dick Men out there, you've all done some things for good pussy. And if you say I'm wrong, check some of your baby mamas because you already know that Joan was good, but your baby mama crazy. For all you women who are paying bills for men who sitting at home, not doing nothing, driving you back and forth to work like baby boy, but he dick you down. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I say that because right now comedy or just the comedy world is kind of a lot of buzz. It's, it's a lot of buzz going on um, surrounding comedian Billy Sorrells and surrounding um, comedian Delay and just some of their escapades and how now it has um, turned into um, a scandal. It's turned into a fiasco. And so really the question is, what is worth good sex? Is your reputation worth good sex? Is your job worth good sex? Is your mental health, your personal well-being, your marriage, um, all these things that people put on the line in the name of good sex? Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody likes some good sex, KT Gray included, okay? I want some back breaking. I want to sweat, all that. I don't want these lashes off, all that. But at what cost? Pleasure should not cost me my mental state. A lot of us stay in relationships that are bad, but the sex is good. And that's that toxic environment that you can't get enough of. A lot of us, like I said, make poor decision making in who we choose to have unprotected sex with. And then now you're stuck to a person that you don't even really like, married to a person you don't even really like, all kinds of things. I will want to challenge you all to start making some better sexual decisions. If you're in um, if you're in a situation that you know is too much for you, that you know that you can't handle, you need to go ahead and back yourself up out of it. Because what you don't want it to do, you don't want a sexual situation, you don't want your fetish, you don't want your alternative lifestyle to then render you in a position where you cannot function, where you cannot continue to maintain your income, where you can't continue to maintain your mental stability, and where you can't continue to maintain face, okay? If you're going to lose face on the sake of good sex, you got the game twisted. You got the game twisted. So this is just a public service announcement. Make it real quick, real sweet for you guys. You all can kind of look into their story and what's going on and see how the, the unraveling, the unraveling has begun. These are unraveling of careers. These are unraveling of households. This is an unraveling of, of personal psyche and mental, just the brothers look ran down. You can see it. And it started from, sexual acts. It started from wanting to have pleasure that exceeds whatever in your mind you thought was sufficient. And now look at what it's cost you. So be mindful when you make these strong sexual decisions. Be mindful when your decisions are then influenced by sex as opposed to sane thinking. So that's just my two cents for you guys for today. Take that with you.
Put a bow on that. Thank shit. you. And I, Take I, I'm just going to sign <laughs> off and end it that sex stands for sexual energy exchange or sensual energy exchange, right? So a lot of times when you're sitting mm -hmm. there taking in that body count, just be just be aware of the energy that you're taking in because you are definitely receiving mm -hmm. some. Now let's get on to spit that ish because y'all y'all know that I can be very long-winded and we're trying to cut that out because we got stuff that we got to talk about, okay? Um, So mm -hmm. I like Tamara Hall, but allegedly she doesn't want Black people on her guests, allegedly. And I say allegedly because this comes from a Dr. Ian Smith that says that she isn't really keen on having black guests on her show during an appearance on the Karen Hunter show. Apparently, Smith's wellness expert and author shared that he's been doing interviews on pretty much every show going. But when it came to Tamara's crew, he was told that she doesn't want it to be a black show. <laughs> Um, there's a talk show with an African-American host, with an African-American executive producer. He said to the publish the publicist, do not pitch to us, your Black clients. We are not a Black show. Pitch us your white clients. We don't want to be looked at as a Black show, Smith said. After some guests, Karen Hunter figured out that Tamara Hall and Smith appeared to confirm this. Wow. The Tamara Hall show allegedly is only interested in having Black guests who are the center of drama and controversy. I can't believe that I'm actually reporting this. Um, I'm not really going to get too caught up in this because I feel as though a lot of times we tear each other down and she might want her show to be a universal show um, to kind of showcase because everybody has a story and she doesn't necessarily want to gear towards Black people. Now, the... Devil's advocate to that part is that, I mean, you are black, and the stories that should be told because oftentimes the stories aren't told, aren't told. And oh, uh oh, I boo murder. Oh, I guess she look. DJ Stiletto giving us a little hint on who about to be on the show. <laughs> she gave us a little preview. I like that. Okay, what are your thoughts, um, T. Gray? Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm on the fence, you guys. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I can understand the mindset of let's not make it a black show. Um, and I do get that. I hear that a lot. Um, and I hear that a lot with people who have reached a certain bracket in their career where they don't want to be, um, characterized as just being black. They want to be something for everyone. Um, I feel like this. No matter who your guest is, what you display, how you talk to people, how welcoming you are, that's what renders you um, universal. I don't think that by having Black guests that that makes you um, less likely to then have a universal client Demographic. or universal mm -hmm. customer or whatever the case may be. I don't think that it changes those things. And I'm going to use a couple people as example. Oprah Winfrey I was, Oprah was never solely, right, was never solely Black guests. Did she have some heavy hitters? Yes, she did. But she also had people who had powerful stories. She also had people on there who um, had something to share that was influential. Um, not everyone on there had a name. Some people you didn't even know until they came on her show. You've never heard them. You've never seen them until they arrived mm -hmm. on her show. So I think that in using your platform, especially with Tamara Hall, I think that she could use her platform to reach everybody. But why would you want to say anything that would then isolate you? From your main from base, the people who black folks hate from your main base. She is. Why would you say I, I, something honestly, like that to isolate you from that? I, I want to say it was allegedly that no one confirmed it except for when the team said that they called producers reported that part. So again, I agree with you because honestly, I feel as though we were the only ones supporting you. Right. And it could still be a black show and be universal. You want to know why? Because we create. Yeah, I know I'm going to go back to it. We are the original human beings of everything, every wave, every culture, every society. We are it. OK, so being a black mm -hmm. show is mm -hmm. up here. 
And that's where we got to put it up on a pedestal. So I agree with you wholeheartedly that we need to make sure that we keep, um, that we just hold ourselves up to a higher regard period. And yeah, those that supported her were all black people. I'm sorry, we, everyone else was not watching your shows. We made it cool, just like we make everything cool. But you know, you know, I digress. <laughs> That's real talk. That's real talk. Yeah. Yeah. True. Like we the wave of we'll everything. Yes, everything. It looks like ours. Yeah. So all right. So cool. Talking about being the wave, Birdman says Cash Money makes thirty million a year off of its masters. Um. If it was, if it has a value, that's a value. If it don't have a value, you're sitting on some shit that's dead. But it's still your shit. But your shit had value. We licensed the music. We just started letting people sample our shit. There's a gang of ways to make money off your masters. We generate twenty to thirty million dollars a year just on our masters. Um, told Wa said Wallow. Okay, so. Again, everybody knows Cash Money to be the home of some of the biggest stars, including Dre, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, um, the whole mm -hmm. Cash Money, hot, uh, juvenile, yes, all of that. Mm -hmm. So them hot boys, all of that stuff. So Birdman has been sued many times for not paying his artists, mainly Lil Wayne, who actually won in the settlement in 2018. And I feel as though that's mm -hmm. all irrelevant because 20 to 30 million to us is a lot of money. But let's ask Dr. Dre how much he's making off of Masters every year. Let's ask somebody else. It's cool to brag and boast, but actually brag and boast and be productive and make sure that all your artists are good and they are satisfied because for the longest, the one who made you the most money, the one who you're probably getting the most money off is masters it took you forever to actually release it so yeah i'm not really impressed by your 20 30 million i am proud of your 20 or 30 million but you're not about to impress me when i feel as though you just you just scar face sean diddy combs of the music industry and you don't treat your artists as well so i'm good off you next but i'm gonna let you go ahead and give your two cents because i know you got something brewing over there too girl not much on that but one. you remember <laughs> You, <laughs> you're so funny. I don't just you know how a lot of old school movies is always an issue when somebody wants to see the books. Like I feel like if somebody pull up on Birdman and want to see the books, you know, it's going to be a problem. But you're right though. Um, it, if an artist, especially one on Cash Money, has had to go through the limps, especially what Lil Wayne has had to go through the limps of trying to get the money that he's owed, just or even trying to just be able to release another album. Like I feel like it does sound, it does sound good. Yeah. It sounds fantastic, but if at your core, you just a criminal, if at your core, you just robbing people blind, if at your core, you keeping people from being able to release music that's still going to put money back in your pocket, then you just a sucker at the end of the day. So, that's how I feel about Birdman. I'm not putting no respect on his name. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. He put some respect on these nuts. Like, no, I'm joking. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> talking about masters and actually talking about producers. Now let's get into it because Michelle, she denies the rumors that she caught Dr. Dre with the man. But this is not the first time I've heard this. And according to Death Row producer Kurt Cobain, he made several shocking allegations during his sit down for the art dialogue that one of that one of them being that Michelle called Dr. Dre with the man named Bruce. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like some bullying to you? The singer was in a relationship with Dr. Dre in the 1990s, if, just in case you don't know, and has a son with the producer. But Cobain, of course, which would be smart for her to actually shut the fuck up and not say nothing. But Cobain says that she told Tupac Shakur that she caught the producer in the bed with Bruce. The neighborhood talk talked to Michelle's who denied the claim. She added that Cobain's claims were a lie and that even though she did have several talks with Pac, she never claimed that she caught Dre in bed with the man. She added that she was shocked that someone would make something like that up. Cobain also claimed that Holly Berry used to sleep with Suge Knight, which I feel as though is very tasteless of him, and that Monica was trying to hook up with Tupac Secure at the age of 15. Now, why are you watching people's vaginas, Mr. Cobain? Tupac um, swerved her because she was a minor. Uh, okay, good, good part on you, Tupac. 
However, Dr. Dre, this is not the first time that we've heard these kind of claims with you. I am not sure shocked because honestly, I can't associate. I don't I don't see you associating anyone from back in those times that were really hardcore, hard, hardcore rocking with you talking about Snoop. Now, as much as love, he might show you from a distance. He's never showing you love up close. And apparently I'm trying to figure out why your wife was paid so much money if she really had no case because she has something to say and you want to keep that ass quiet. That's why she's able to get 180 plus 360,000 for a cell phone bill. This this lady is collecting checks and millions Ooh. and millions a month. So you have to answer, why didn't he dispute any of this? Why is she getting all of this money? Hmm, I wonder why. I what mean, secret really? he has to he didn't agree <laughs> to give her all the money until he was in the hospital with his whole near-death experience. Being near death make you want to reevaluate some stuff. So prior to him going to the hospital, he was dead against giving that woman money. He was ready to drag her. And then he got sick in the hospital and don't nobody really know the full story of what happened. And then all of a sudden when he got out, oh, she could have whatever she wants. I think that nigga was like, oh shit, I'm about to die. Oh, pay her back no, for maybe some no, of the stuff she probably no. had to go through. No, you know. no I'm not. I'm, no, I'm, I'm can't. sorry. I'm, I'm not buying it. I feel like the it, reason why I said um, it because that kid, you getting sick could have been a cover up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. My bad. I'm not. <laughs> no, no, you're right. It could have been a cover up. But I feel like if Dre, for real, if he had been dealing with dudes all this time, I think it would have came out by night. I think somebody would have said something like, even like with though. Birdman, like people didn't see Birdman in some crazy situations. You know what I mean? Put the pictures positions. out there, and it just don't make sense. <laughs> it don't it don't make knowledge, damn it! It wasn't making no sense. Like I feel like we would have seen something, especially visually. I think we would have seen something by now but hey who's to know when you got a lot of money apparently that's what just be going on in hollywood i don't mean no yeah, harm and i definitely want to be big one day want to be whatever i don't want to be that big <laughs> i don't want to be that big yeah i really don't i feel like people i feel like people really and truly are crossing over nowadays so at the end of the day who knows? Because Diddy is definitely one of those, okay? Now, we've heard some Diddy in some compromising positions now, and this yes, man definitely yes. is backing me up. He is backing me up by any means necessary because he changed his name, which is his middle name, of course, to love. Now, I cannot understand how this man can change his middle name to love, but he says it stands for brotherly love, but we're going to see. He's official. Welcome to the love era. He posted with his brand new Florida license. Look what I just got in the mail, which was cool. The picture looks kind of weird to me and questionable, just like his sexuality is as well. Um, did he mm -hmm. said on a video, a video on Twitter that he is now going by love, AKA brother love. Mm -hmm brother love okay and would not be answering to any other names he circled back later and said that he was only joking adding the name was just a part of one of his alter egos so why couldn't you make an alter ego and actually just have it as an alter ego why legally change your name to love and say that that's what you want everyone to call you um he legally changed his name to sean love clothes in 2019 after filing a petition to change his in november 2019 so i guess he's you know he's he's official he's official okay cool but i think it's questionable what are your thoughts okay what his name is <laughs> i don't care what his name is who know him in them streets as love or whatever he choose to be? He puffy. Let's just like, call a spade a spade. Nigga, you're going to be 85 <laughs> and you still going to be puffy. You ain't going to be Sean Diddy Combs. You ain't going to be Diddy. You ain't going to be old nigga. You just going to be You're going to be puffy, puffy in the puffy go. suits and the yes. shimmery and the shimmery clothes <laughs> yes. jacket running well, up and down and acting the damn food. That's who you going to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right though. But so little, I know you got that mix ready for us, hun. You guys, we have a fantastic guest coming up in the second half. Singer Ricky from the Murder Inc. 
is going to be in the building with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get into some of her new music on this mix. Stiletto, you got us ready, girl, because I'm ready to party, boo. Hey, Ladies, and we back, 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 and we back. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling that heartbreak song. Loved it. Shout out to Murder Inc. That was totally, totally lit. Um, while we're waiting for the guests to still join on, um, we're definitely gonna finish with our spit with our spit that ish. So just really quickly, little Yachty announces. Oh, I love it. Keep playing in the background. Just go ahead and keep playing it because her voice, her voice is so soothing. And the production on that song is so lit. But I want to save that for her because I definitely want to tell her that when she comes on air. Um, little Yachty announces unisex nail paint line. I, it's not Yay. unisex, but I'm going to just go with it. I'm going to go with this since everybody's yes. whatever. I like to introduce, he said he'd like to introduce his new nail paint line called Crete underscore Co. First color drop May 2020 for all genders, for you, not them, definitely not for me. Um, the Creep IG page currently only has one post at the moment. Followers of the account can see a video montage of Yachty at photo shoot for the product, which is pretty cool, I guess. And I'm all supporting, I'm so for supporting our uh, black young artist, so he's still an artist. So I say go out and support him. Um, Little Yachty was teased creating his own nail paint as a response to a 17 year old male student, Trevor Wilkinson, being suspended from high school for wearing nail polish. Now, I think that that is ridiculous for someone to be suspended for something that is not affecting anyone by any means, at, at any means. Um, if someone, your little, little Yachty, in support of him, says it's 2020, about to be 2021. Why do we still have barriers? If someone wants to express themselves in any type of way, as long as it's not harming anyone or bringing anybody down, they should not be allowed to do so. And I, I agree with that. So 23 year old former McDonald's employee continued. When I was in college, some people are some people are just light years behind mentally. And I don't feel as though we have to agree with everything, but I also feel as though you should respect the human being for what they are because they're still human and we all still bleed this or we all still bleed, bleed the same. Um, and he said, bitch is just supposed to be entertaining. It ain't even that deep. Y'all niggas so in denial with y'all masculinity. This shit is like bothering y'all. Relax, tweeted Yachty. Now, I wouldn't even say that it's okay to tap into your feminine energy at times, even as a man. I get it. But at the same time, I don't have to agree with every aspect and thing that you choose that you want to agree with. We can respectfully agree to disagree. And yeah, that's just my thoughts on it. T? Hello? T? Mute. You on mute. You're muted. You're muted, boo. I'm mute. My I bad, thought it was me. You can see me. I'm going to see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. So, uh, T. Gray said she don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Another one that we don't care, about. Why. Why. we don't care about. Yes, I'm going to tell you what. So, little Yachty um, has always kind of worn nail polish. And does it catch me off guard? Yes. But I think that it's so much going on and I'm trying to be careful this? with my words. I have to be careful <laughs> with my words. Um, sometimes I feel like it's certain things that shouldn't be tampered with. Masculinity, I feel like should not be tampered with. So that being said, if you have a product that is gender neutral, person neutral, whatever the case may be, if that's your flow, do your thing. I don't think it should be, it's not taught it as a masculine product. So that's why it's like, you know, it doesn't bother me. If it was something where it was like, okay, um, I don't even know how to put it. I just think that if you guys, I'm having a hard time. I just feel, I, like, it, I'm I hard just feel time. like it shouldn't be forced. Like, I feel like it's forced. So I feel like it's too many times that black men 
who are in a certain position, who may live an alternative lifestyle or whatever the case may be, I feel like sometimes they're doing too much. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. just my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes, and I'm not taking nothing away from the sexuality, like the LGBTQs, like I, I'm, I'm here, y'all. I get it. I've, I've been in a full on relationship with a female before for five years. So it's not like I don't get it, but I still feel like sometimes people do too much. Like if it was a female who want to have a goatee, want to stand on the corner with the niggas, I'm gonna feel like, dude, you like you're you're doing too much. You're being too masculine. Like you could still be a woman and be gay without yeah, trying man. to be a man. Yeah, I feel man. the same way about mm -hmm. dudes. I feel like yeah, sometimes you go too far and you're trying to be too feminine but then on the back and i feel like is this what you really think of women is this how you think we are i feel like you little yachty kind of toes the line i don't know what his sexual preference is but i feel like he kind of toes the line so when it comes to you know you teaching little oh, boys definitely to wear like <laughs> I, I, I just can't I just, I mean, but that's just my personal opinion, you guys. These are not the thoughts and opinions of Illustrate Radio. Like, I know Dwayne Wade will get a and I'd be like, nah, I'm going to hold up. <laughs> you know, wait till you're an adult. Wait until you really understand the ramifications of what you're doing and what you're teaching kids. Like, these young dudes on these platforms, him, Lil Nas X, like, Little kids look up to y'all. They sing y'all songs. They want to be they're like very you guys. Influential. Like, yes. come on, sir, sir. And I'm that, that, that's when you got to talk to them like that, sir. <laughs> I mean, be a sir for just a second, or at least let your audience know where you stand. Maybe just it's a better way to do it. It's a better way to do it. Like, and not for people don't think about that. That is my main thing. Yeah, yeah, I feel it's like too I'm much. echoing. Am I echoing too much? Yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> it's like I just and I and I don't want to come off as homophobic by me saying these things because I'm not homophobic by no means, but it's a it's I think it's certain lines that you cross. And when you know that your platform renders millions of people who are under the age of 21 that follow you, that look up to you, that want to be like you, want to dress like you, want to whatever. Like, I think that you have a very specific social responsibility to, one, yes, you have to be true to yourself, but teach them to understand that, hey, even in these things, these are certain things that adults should engage in. These are things that adults should be making decisions on. These are things that once you become an adult, this is, you know, how you make these choices before you, I don't know. I just feel like they're doing too much. They're doing too much, really. Like, yeah, I, I, I feel like a lot of, um, a lot of sexuality is pushed down kids' throats. Yeah. How am I echoing? What is going on here? I'm trying to figure out why, because I am not in a bathroom. I am in my room. room. Now it's not. Good. Okay. I don't know what the heck that mm -hmm. was. But anyway, I still kind of hear it in the background. <laughs> okay, no, we're good. So, <laughs> so, you guys, I know you all were waiting, probably anticipating um, Ricky from Murder Inc. being able to join in. But unfortunately, you guys, you know the way of the world. Sometimes we have these technical difficulties and she wasn't able to get in with us tonight, but we're definitely going to reschedule. We're definitely going to bring her back on and have a fantastic time, have a fantastic interview. Now that she's missed this one, now we got to challenge her to sing live. Now we got to make her sing on the show. Yeah, yeah we're going to have okay. to. We're going to make her sing on the show. She owes that. <laughs> that soothing voice, she owes us yeah. that. We, we, we missed it. We're going to miss it. But, but since she's actually not going to be on, we'll get to cover the rest of Spit That Ish. Um, and y'all know I hate this couple to the max, Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. I don't like them. I'm going to make sure these are not the mm -hmm. opinions of the show, but these are the murderers of today's society and culture in the world. And I don't give two shits that they're getting a divorce. I'm actually glad. And I hope that she takes him for everything that he's got because they kind of built it, the rumors and the bullshit together. They have over 51 billion in assets. Like that is some crazy money. But again, 
you know, they're they're breaking up, um, and it's and it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's um, amicable. They're good. They're just asking for a little bit of space and privacy. I feel like Bill Gates. She's probably tired of living the lie that he's gay, because um, I feel as though he's another one. Um, so yeah, they're getting a divorce. It's been twenty years. Whoop de do do do. Um, the news comes just two years after another of the world's richest figures, Jeff Benzos, announced his divorce from his ex-wife, Mackenzie. Now, do I find that as a coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I'm just being entertaining. I don't really care. I don't really care about his sexuality. I don't care about her sexuality. I care about the things that they represent. And he's the fucking computer guy talking about health issues that he has no business talking about. And yeah, who gives two shits that they're getting divorced? whoop de doo Hey, they still worth $51 billion. And that's just an asset. It's not even considering their net worth. So who cares? Like the kids are raised. They good. Y'all been living a lie. The line's no longer working for you. She probably like, okay, now I want to go on vacation with somebody with a man because she looked like a man herself. And Bill Gates probably want to do the same damn thing with somebody, little brother or cousin. So y'all enjoy, live life. You're rich. Who gives a shit? <laughs> so that being said, <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Our hot take? <laughs> you gonna let it lay right there with your rich ass. <laughs> <laughs> what problems do you have? Exactly. I'm so mad that somebody's making this even an issue. It's not. It actually might be better for the right. world that they're actually getting a war. So now they can stop talking about goddamn vaccinations every 30 seconds. Or let me say this. What do I call it? An experimental drug. That's what I call it. It's so interesting how people were so ready to jump on everything that they were saying, yet and still neither of them has MD behind their name, yet and still tech has almost nothing to do with real medicine at the end of the day. Granted, you might create something, the computer systems to help develop some stuff, but having a true understanding of what real medicine is, what real health is, what real sickness is. I, I think that that was just bananas, how so many people just were right on it. And they were the ones who were like, Black people should get it first. And everybody's like, oh my God, yeah, no, nah, the fuck wrong with y'all. Yeah, I should. <laughs> and y'all doctor. What's his name? Uh, Dr. No. Uchi, Auchi, what's his name? Auchi, you're so silly. <laughs> but I, just, <laughs> I, I am, when it comes to people breaking up, maybe I'm a little bit jaded. But I don't find it as entertainment. I mean, at the end of the day, she's going to come off well. He's not going to be hurting too bad. So where's the news in that? You know what I mean? Um, if she's not throwing no hot grits on me, Al Green style, I don't really want to hear about it. <laughs> um, I know we don't really have a hot take. But I kind of want to present one real quick and y'all tell me what y'all opinion is. It's very impromptu. This has nothing to do with the show. This is me literally coming to wing it. Wing it. So back to Kevin Samuels. I was talking a lot about him and how he, I feel as though he's a, um, what I call a metrosexual man. Um, I just want him to own up to the fact that he's been through divorces and that he is not the catch himself. But how do you feel about men bashing and women bashing and also defending our Black men and also defending our Black women against the culture? I feel like there's a lot of bashing going on on both sides. Um, what do you think there are some ways that we can kind of solve that or outside of going to counseling and therapy what are some things that we can possibly do right now to kind of bring us more in together cohesively instead of always being there for the gossip and tearing one another down and all that other rhetoric that he spits? So just the reality of it is that us being willing to tear each other down is something that's taught um we have become a society of the reality show okay now granted the reality show is not real 
but that's what we gravitate to. We don't gravitate to the things that uplift us, that make us better, that make us smarter, that make us want to build together. We gravitate to the bullshit. And the same way now with Kevin Samuels, I do believe that Kevin Samuels is an opportunist, but I also believe that that man is smart because the reality of it is if people, not people, women, black women who just so happen to be the strongest force in the world, but clearly it's some of us who are going to pay a Kevin Samuels. It's some of us who want to sit on his life. It's some of us who want to want to sit for him to belittle us, degrade us, um, break us down in some 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 level of self he he has to have some level of self-satisfaction off of it. It can't all be just money. That's just what it is. As long as we continue to show each other that this is all we are, as long as we continue to support, as long as we can continue to make these types of things the number one show, the most watched live, um the 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 epitome or or the stance of what we represent. Like we have to pull our support from these things. We have to pull our support from these things. We have to stop watching these things. We have to stop paying these people. We have to take our dollars away to show that we're stronger than that and then put the dollars into something that is uplifting, that does bring us in a positive light, that supports us as a people, that lifts Black women up, that lifts Black men up. And it's so... It's one of those things that's so much easier said than done. than done. But I feel like that's where the disconnect is. The disconnect is the moms, the dads are watching these things, are supporting these things. They teach their kids to you also watch and support these things. And then my insecurities, I'm now pushing on to my children. My children's children are going to continue to do that because I'm not teaching them that there's something better than that. If I'm sitting and I'm watching women curse each other out, belittle each other, talk trash to each other, and I, oh girl, did you see that? And I can't wait to the next episode. Who's with me? My three daughters. Mm -hmm. Who's teaching them or who's mm -hmm. showing them that this is what black women represent and this is how we are? Mm -hmm. uh, we could mm -hmm. sit there and be like, well, you know, your mom ain't like that in reality. No, but this is what I'm watching. This is what I'm supporting. This is what I'm putting my money into. This is who I follow. You know what I mean? Society mm -hmm. as a whole has to change. It's a mindset as a whole that has to change. And we will have to want something better. Start teaching our daughters and our sons something better than that. Right. And I'm just going to I'm just going to say this. Alpha males, you cannot be considered an alpha male if you are sitting there arguing with the woman because an alpha male knows that his strength is in quiet, is in peace. Because no one, again, I repeat, no one can out argue a black woman. Now, any man who feels as though he can, you are not a man to me. And Kevin, and Kevin Samuels, all you spit is rhetoric. And all those other people who love to follow suit behind him instead of figuring out ways to protect and, and actually give these women some kind of way to figure shit out. If you are not coming up with a solution, you are a part of of the problem. I am I'm mm -hmm. totally against man bashing as well. Um mm -hmm. Layla, I'm sorry my daughter interrupted my train of thought, but I am so against man bashing as well. I do not believe in degrading especially our black men because you all have it hard as it is, but I need for everyone mm -hmm. to step up and protect us as well. And I feel as though these are immediate things that can be done. Shut the fuck up if you do not have a solution. If you are going to come down and tell this girl, oh, you are 185 and you are 5'2", but yet you want six figures and X, Y, D, instead of coming to her and say, you know what, sweetheart, I think you need to worry about you first. I think you need to love on yourself first so that way you can manifest the things, the healthy things that you want to do by being healthy within you first. That Oh, or or you or could other be like is just rhetoric and them rhetoric. six figure and niggas and like them thick girls because they out there. <laughs> hey. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know that's right. When T. I know right. was a motherfucker 145 with the muscles popping and then that bitch went put on 20 pounds, niggas that's all over, all over that 20 pounds. <laughs> 
Shoot, all over it. Let it rain. Because there's some people who like, I think but preference crazy. is preference. And who are you to say? That's what I said. Preference is preference. And who are you to tell what to speak for 90% of men? Because I see a lot of men mm -hmm. who say, oh, they, who, who they'll follow the pretty girl. They'll follow the porn star. But that's not the one that they're marrying. That's not the one that they're building mm -hmm. foundations with. OK. And and girls, mm -hmm. you got to stop being so hard because I know it hurts to get all dressed up, to put on your, your finest. And no man talks to you because why we say stupid shit like I don't like to smile and I don't like it anyone that tells me to okay it hurts and then we send them off to the regular girls and it's nothing wrong with being regular because i'm a regular regular girl all day my boobs ain't done my face ain't perfect my ass and my shape ain't good but i am very welcoming and so is my spirit you all need to focus on mm -hmm. having a more welcoming spirit okay before mm -hmm. you worry about what you think that you deserve to have. Do you really feel as though you deserve to have that if you are not treating yourself and loving on yourself the best way possible? So that's me. I'm just going to sign out what? on that. Y'all need to go meditate. No, hold up, hold up, hold hold up because I want, to make, <laughs> I want to make a point about what he does. And I think that this is something that women really need to pay attention to because I think they're missing this. Kevin Samuels calls a man high value based off of his dollar amount and either his bank account or what he makes. That's not the true value of a person. You could be no, Bill Gates rich and be a horrible person. You could be a dude who, who make 80 grand a year and be a phenomenal person. So a lot of times when women are going to him, he's saying, well, you want a high value, man. You want to think about the reality of what he stipulates as a high value man, as, as opposed to value. what your values are as a woman and what is a value to you and the person that you choose or the person that wants you back. Like, come on, like y'all, I don't Man. know why y'all calling him. Call me. I'll do this shit for $5.99. I do it for the, <laughs> for the low low, you know, and I really feel like it should come from, it should come from right up. So we're going to wrap it up really quickly. But before I do, like I said, it takes, I, I feel as though it should come from a woman. Women, if you want advice, go to another strong woman, not another bruised woman, not another hurt woman, one that is completely sound. Like T. Gray said, y'all can go to her. Okay. She gives counseling on a regular basis that just not only helps you with sex, but also will help you with you as well. Um, it needs to come from us. It doesn't need to come from a man. But we have to start having honest. Hmm. Honest conversations with one another. Stop liking these thotty body photos. Bitch, bend over, skip out on the internet, whole vagina, everything. But she got a whole ass wife and kids out because that is not the model. That is not how we should be living and carrying ourselves. If we want ourselves to be respected, we have to literally stop using our body parts as a weapon and start treating it like it should be put as a prized possession. Because now that is what these men are doing as well. Okay. They are putting value, not just on their penises, but on their brains. We mm. need to do the same. Okay. Because our bank account could be all the way up to here. But if you're if you're acting like a thought, you're going to be treated all the way down to here. Men, stop a second now. But anyway, I know because we can we we can we can talk about this topic forever. Um, I definitely want us to cover in one day. Would you prefer humble or do you prefer rich? A six figure uh, guy versus a guy with values. But I will wait for my producer to bring that up on a hot take for another show where we don't have a guest because we are technically booked up until June and I'm mm -hmm. excited, okay? Anyway, so um, you all can find me at Magical AF Podcast. I think this was a great show tonight. You can definitely look us up on Illustrate Radio on YouTube live 
every Wednesday at nine o'clock. Follow us on Roku Seven on Demand. Um, our previous episodes are shown there every Wednesday at eight o'clock, and you can also go to their website www.sevenondemand.com, and you can get to see us twenty four hours somewhere in the spin cycle. They show it. You don't necessarily have to have the actual Roku TV um, TV application, but you can check us out online. So I don't want any excuses. Make sure y'all definitely go to YouTube, thumbs up, like, and subscribe because we cannot do this all without you following us and we appreciate your support. Um, don't forget to follow Sissy Sweet as well. And yeah, that's it for me, T. Gray. Where can they find you, boo-boo? Um, so you guys, I'm going to go ahead and make it a one-stop shop for you. I need you to go to the T. Gray at the T Gray, T H E T G R A Y E. That'll take you to everything that I do, you guys. I feel like you all are missing it. Definitely, if you want to get those laughs, you want to get that sex talk, the love below underscore sex talk with T Gray. But I want you all to start getting in the habit of hitting up the T Gray, start hitting up my website, check out everything that I do. I don't want you all to miss a beat. Your sound went out. Your sound, lucky. My bad. I was on mute because I was talking to the son in the background. My bad. I was saying that DJ Stiletto, do you have anything that you want to tell us? Because I'm still waiting to hear some of that good news that you said you had for us. And we didn't get to get you on your birthday because your folks played a surprise party. So happy belated birthday to our number one DJ, Bars. So any news? Um, I that just want to say I am. Yes, um, I want to thank you guys for happy birthdays. Everybody that reached out to me, it was a very busy and fulfilling weekend for me. Um, my family definitely came through, yes. um, but I do have a big announcement, um, more so an announcement to the world that I want to make personally, probably within like two weeks. But I can tell. My group members, I will tell them in our group text and meeting. Private chat. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> yeah, private chat. I can tell them that now since I told my family. And then um, in about two weeks, that'll be my countdown for everything as a release. And that's all I can say about me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say I love growth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I, I love it. I love it. So excited. I'm so proud of each and every one of you on this show. Thank you, everyone, again. And DJ Stilettos, take us out on a nice little bye to, to make sure we set this movie right for the night. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I hope that everybody takes a shot because I don't do tequila. It's going to put me to sleep, but we're going to go out with a bang. All right. All right. But I'm going to take me a shot or something. Right. Let me just say that. Okay. But I love you, ladies. See y'all. I don't drink tequila Wednesday. either, but we're going to drink this. Huh? You all. That started off. Bye, ladies. Suavemente de mayo. See y'all next Wednesday.